Hello, and welcome to the confessional at St. Malachy Catholic Church in Brownsburg. My name is Father John Hollowell. I'm the associate pastor here at St. Malachy. I wanted to take this opportunity to get on camera and on film a talk that I gave to some of our men preparing to lead a Christ Renews His Parish retreat on the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Uh, it's a talk I've given several other times, but they, the men really encouraged me to uh, try and put this on film for the larger parish to take part in and to participate in, in it, if they so chose. So this is just an opportunity to kind of examine the sacrament, um, answer some questions, maybe clear up any misconceptions that are out there about the sacrament as well. First of all, I think it's important to realize where the sacrament comes from. And as with all sacraments, it comes from Scripture. Uh, specifically, there are two places in the Gospel. Uh, one of them is our Gospel from this weekend, where Christ says, I am giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And that comes, from us, comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 19. Also, in John's Gospel, we hear it even more clearly, uh, less metaphorically associated with the forgiveness of sins and more clearly stated in John's Gospel, where Christ says, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. So there we hear more clearly even John saying, you know, this has to do with sins. Matthew's Gospel as well, with the issue of binding and loosing, would have been very familiar to uh, the Jewish people, the rabbis uh, in the Jewish uh, faith, have the ability uh, in Jesus' time to bind and loose. Uh, that was associated with deciding who, was, who could be a part of the synagogue and of the community and also who uh, would be removed from the community um, for various reasons, always with the mindset of trying to eventually have those people return to the church. So even the binding and loosing language that we see in Matthew's Gospel would set off a trigger for the Jewish people to know that Jesus is talking, telling the apostles, you have the ability uh, to forgive or to, um, or to not forgive, to keep the sins attached to those people. And we'll get into that more in a minute. I think one of the first things that's important to think about is, and a question that we get a lot as priests with regards to the sacrament, is just why, why can't I sit on my couch and ask God to forgive my sins? Why can't I just do that as a one-on-one -on -one dialogue between myself and God. Why do I have to go to a priest um, and, and confess my sins and go through this ritual? And I think it's important to realize that God could have set it up that way. You know, in Matthew's Gospel, He could have said, um, I, whatever sins you confess to the Father on your couch alone, I forgive, and whichever sins you don't, I don't forgive. You know, he could, have, he could have set up the structure to be such that we could sit at home alone and confess our sins simply through prayer, and that God would then uh, forgive those sins, thus not having a need to have the sacrament. So the question then becomes, why did Christ set it up this way? Why did Christ encourage us to go to a priest? Why does he want this to be a sacrament of the church? And I think that one of the, one of the main reasons that Christ surely did this, was because He Himself was human. He walked our earth. He lived as we live. He knew, as a human being, the value that we get as human beings of talking to another person, of seeing that nod of the head from another person when we're confessing something that we feel has been just, you know, just totally has had us in knots, maybe for years. And to see another person gently nod their head and say, I, I understand. I know what you're talking about. You're not alone in that battle. Those kinds of reassurances, Jesus knew the value in that. And so he's kind of, in setting up the sacrament, I think Christ is essentially funneling us to another person. Funneling us to the priest. He set it up precisely because he wants us to seek that interaction. Uh, he wants to give us His mercy and His forgiveness through another person because He knows the value of talking to another person. And so I think we see then that's why Christ has set up this sacrament. 
And anyone who has experienced this, the sacrament, I think, can attest to the power of that, of hearing someone offer counsel directly uh, and, and give encouragement and, and advice for ways to maybe avoid that sin in the future. I think people who have experienced the sacrament can attest to the power that comes from interacting with that person one-on-one. -on -one. I think, you know, a lot of times we have a lot of anxiety about, the, about going to the sacrament. I know I myself, as a priest, uh, who I try to take advantage of the sacrament monthly, and there's even now um, a lot of anxiety in the moment when it's time to go. You know, you're standing in line, and I've been there before uh, many times where I've been standing in line, and, um, or maybe even before I left, I'm still at home, and thoughts of, well, you know, I didn't kill anyone. Uh, I haven't committed anything especially terrible um, this time around, you know, or I've got other things to do, or maybe I get to the church and the line's really long, and I say, ah, I can come back next week, you know, and we, we put that off. Uh, and I think that we've all been there, and we have lots of reasons. I think the devil tempts us, of course, to, 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 to bypass the sacrament because he knows how good it will be for us. Uh, what I try to remember for myself is that everybody experiences anxiety before going to confession. Uh, it would, somebody once said that uh, I would only be worried if you weren't nervous about getting ready to confess sins to another person. You know, that's a good sign, the fact that we are anxious about that, because it is uncomfortable at times. But what I always remember and what gets me through that now is the idea that I've never felt bad after a confession. In fact, I've much the opposite. I've always felt a great sense of relief and joy and, and, and happiness and kind of a lightness of, of my being after taking advantage of this sacrament. And so now in the moment when I'm, when I'm anxious beforehand, I remember that, in fact, okay, I've never felt bad afterwards. And in fact, as a priest or as just a fellow Catholic, I've never encountered anyone who's ever said, wow, I wish I hadn't gone to, that, to the sacrament after the fact. I see a lot of times as, pre, as a priest here in this confessional and elsewhere throughout the archdiocese, people come in very anxious, you know, sweaty palms. Um, you know, you can tell their demeanor has changed from what I normally see out in the parish. Um, but I think I, I would almost guarantee that if I asked every one of those people as they left, were you glad you did that? They would say, absolutely. Absolutely, it's, it's uh, a, a, a great experience, uh, and a very real and powerful encounter with the mercy of God to sit in this sacrament. And so if you are anxious about receiving the sacrament, if you're ever nervous you know, or, or have thoughts of trying to delay it or put it off to another day or another time, know, think instead to the end. Fast forward to how you're going to feel after the sacrament, after you've received that. And, and I think that that can be enough to, to, to get us through that anxiety that we feel. Um, it's important, too, another thing to think about with the sacrament, and I, I find this to be very, uh, very important. A lot of times today, the, the, the language has, has developed, and that's, it's okay, it's not a big deal, but people will come in a lot of times and say, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Um, and that's how they start the confession. And... I think that comes from a mindset that it is, in fact, the priest that gives forgiveness, that offers forgiveness. Um, and instead, uh, typically the phrasing has always been, when people come in to begin the sacrament, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. So the priest offers the person receiving the sacrament a blessing, uh, but instead, it, the, the priest is able to offer a blessing, but it, in fact, is Christ, when it comes to the forgiveness aspect of the sacrament, it's Christ speaking through the priest to the person. And I find that to be very, very powerful. Um, it is not me, as in Father John Hollowell, specifically saying the words of absolution. Those powerful words of absolution, again, are, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Any, that is how every sacrament of, of, of penance comes to a conclusion. 
And again, it's important to realize that it's, it's the priest's hand offering that absolution. It's the priest's voice uh, that's speaking that. But it's, those are only, it's Christ's words. Christ is speaking and it only is my voice and my actions. We, we believe as Catholics that it's Christ working through the person of the priest. But it is truly Christ offering that, that, that forgiveness. And we believe that that happens one other time in a very real way, and that's in the Eucharist, uh, when we pray the words of institution. Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which has been given up for you. And the priest shows the, the congregation, the host, and the same with the wine. Those, again, we notice that the language changes to first person. I absolve you. Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body. So those very crux words of our faith, those, those key hinge words of our faith, here in this sacrament and at the sacrament at the altar, it's, it's, it is Christ in a real way speaking to us. And I think that that, that is just an amazing uh, thing to dwell on and to meditate on as we think about this great sacrament. Uh, that it isn't, in fact, the priest, it's Christ working through the priest. Uh, three things are needed, uh, and this is a typical, maybe if people grew up in the 50s or 60s, they would maybe be able to recite this uh, more uh, off the tip of their tongue, but there are three things that, that are needed for uh, a valid sacrament. And, and I think it's important to look at each of these um, individually because there, there are certain things that are helpful for us. Um, those three things would be confession, uh, that sounds obvious, but we'll get into that in a minute, uh, contrition needs to be there. Uh, and also then thirdly, satisfaction for one's sins. Basically that means the penance. The person has to carry out the penance. Um, but we'll get to those in a minute. Let's, let's start with confession. Um, what does that mean? Well, it means that the, first of all, the person coming to the sacrament has to confess their sins. And that seems again obvious, but what I've had happen at times is there have been people, um, very rarely, but there have been people who have come in and said, um, I have nothing to confess. And, um, uh, tr you know, try to ask some questions, you know. But there have been times where people have said, at the end of all of that, you know, basically, you know, Father, there, I don't have anything to confess. And in those instances, then, and I can share that because it's outside the seal, because there's, there wasn't a sacrament there present. The seal doesn't apply because... There never, the sacrament never took place. But in those instances where someone doesn't have anything to confess, then the sacrament can't take place. Um, and so that seems obvious, and for 99% of people, uh, that makes sense. But there are, again, some who come here, um, and in those instances, I'll simply offer to pray with them, to offer them a blessing. But the, the, the sacrament can't take place unless there's something that the person brings to want to confess. So I share that. The second thing, contrition. Contrition means sorrow, and uh, this hits on a very uh, important topic, I think, with the sacrament. Most of the time, people, after having confessed their sins, it's very clear through their language, through how they're speaking about their sins, that they are truly sorry for those sins and hope to never do them again. And I think that, that hits on a key phrase for the sacrament, uh, hoping to never do the sin again. The church asks that we, in coming to the sacrament, that we can say that in an honest way. God, I hope to never do these sins again. I know that I walk out of here with all of the grace that I need to never fall into those sins again. And the church asks that we say that. The church does not ask that we guarantee that we will never do it again. The church doesn't ask that we have to promise they will never do it again. The church asks that we come to this sacrament with contrition, with sorrow, and a hope then that we will never do those sins again. Now, after hearing confession, and I've shared, many other priests have shared this with me as well, there have been times where a person has not, has not expressed that contrition. And, the, and, and usually what happens is, after, the, after myself as a priest, again, very kindly, very charitably, this is a, a sacrament of great grace and, and uh, of great warmth and love. But the priest, the church asks the priest to kind of 
ask the penitent, okay, so the way you, you're